so before we start, I wanted to talk about something that I had to do recently, and that is set up my old router to act as a bridge or a repeater, if you will. And the reason I did that is because once I got in my new internet, because I, I switched to a different internet uh, provider now, and the modem location is in a different place. Let me see if I can kind of show you. Let's say this is my old modem, right? This is my old modem. And this is, I'm going to call it old. Let's see if I can draw this old. I'm trying to draw with a mouse. Old modem, not modem, uh, router. And here is the new one. New one, new. So since I was using physical connection, meaning, okay, no, okay there it is, new. It's meaning that I had to run cables, right? Cable one, cable two, cable three cable 4 and etc to different computers right different computers since the location of the new one here is totally different matter of fact on a different floor of my house now the cables are no longer long enough so what I did was run a cable main cable from port number one right because this is a router slash modem from the new one so I took from P1 port one and then ran a cable to the old router right here and plugged it in and now I can use the old router and set it as a bridge bridge I'm trying to draw with the mouse sorry it's kind of difficult bridge so what that does it just extends the network extends the network so that way I can just keep using the old cables, you know. So, well, I just used one of them, one of the cables that I had, and then ran it to the other floor, and then set this one as a repeater, and this one is located where my most of my computers are for physical address. So you can set up routers to be a bridge or a repeater even from a wireless, from a wireless network. You can set up, and not all routers will support this, but you can log into your old router and in this case all I had to do is just set it as bridge and then I had to make sure that the old router is set up on the same subnet uh, or on the same sub yeah, I guess subnet as the new one and I'll show you what that means here in a moment and I also had to make sure that the its IP address is on the same subnet and I'll explain that because now this old router kinda acts as an extension of this one so I just need one cable from the modem slash router here it's it's all together it's all one thing right and then I just ran a cable to this old one and now the old one will extend the network and it will assign its own IP addresses it is now has all of its function pretty much all of its functions disabled except the bridge function that allows this I'm sorry I'm getting into networking here a little bit but it's not too complex I want you to understand how this works all right, let's do IP config forward slash all. And I want to show you something here. Okay, so here is my Ethernet adapter, right? This is what my computer is plugged in. And this one is getting, uh, this one is directly connected, just like all my other computers, from that router that's been set up as a bridge. Right, as a bridge between those between the two routers. So what's happening is that you have to make sure that your IP address, your uh, uh, your old router is set up on the same subnet, uh, your its physical IP address. So here it is. Here is default gateway, and I've talked about this here. Default gateway is where your router is. So this is the location of the gateway, which is the gateway to the internet on my new router right this is I have to go through this to reach the internet and that's the location of my new router the old one I had to change its IP address meaning I had to make it static and on the network and I but I and I had to be on the same subnet so you see how here is uh, 192.168.1 and that's that's the that's the net that's the subnet 
And after that, after one, there are a certain amount of IP addresses that you can use within that. Once you run out of IP addresses here, for example, here it says 254. Once we run out of all the IP addresses here, this switches over to two. And then it continue, then it goes again and it has ability to assign new IP addresses. But now it's on number two, which is a new subnet. So for this to work, the the both routers have to be on the same subnet, in this case number one subnet. Right? Number one net, if you will, to make it easier to understand. So I had to change its IP address to uh, let me do this here. I'm going to open it up in Chrome. I had to set it up to 192.168.1.200. So I picked just any number that was available. So my old router that's acting as a bridge is now at this location. And here it is. It's, it's coming up again, right? So this is, so it's, it used to be dot one this is typical of, of routers it used to be 198.168.1.1 but i had to change it um, as because it's now a bridge to have to be on the same subnet in order to, to for it to work as a bridge let's see i just changed the uh, um here it is and this is this is the only thing that can happen. You lose a lot of menus, you lose a lot of its functions, and now this router is just set up as a bridge. You see here, right here, internet connection, it's set up in the bridge mode, and the IP version address that I had to give it to is this one, which is on the same net, subnet, which is at number one. And so it could have been any of those IP addresses that are unused. And I had to specify the same subnet mask that the new router is using which usually is always this usually and it's default gateway remember we looked at this default gateway and that's the location where the new router is on my home network you see how that's all connected and that's how this is able to work now all right and my current and i'm still getting ip addresses from the new from the new router see us here it says here it says it's 1.118. It, it it doesn't matter uh, because you know the, the functions of the one that's set to to be a bridge are basically disabled, like other functions like the HTTP server, the firewall settings, all of other things that you're used to seeing. They're now disabled because it's now in the bridge mode. And you know if I go to Wi-Fi. You have to, it's disabled. I make sure that it's disabled so it doesn't cause problems. Because if you happen to have Wi Fi that's, um, that, that you have the same name on the new and old one, and you still have it active on the old one, it's going to cause you problems. You're going to be connecting, you're like, why is it not working? And then you, it would take you, you know, a while to really figure out that you're connected to a, a router that's basically disabled, that's just a repeater slash bridge. I hope this is fairly easy to understand. So I have it disabled here, so it's not conflicting with the new router. This here is just, you know, basic IP address situations here. Okay. And and that's that's pretty much it. I hope I hope that's understood. Just to kind of reiterate, to make it into a bridge mode, to set up as a repeater, to extend your physical network or Wi-Fi network, um, you have to make sure that your uh, router is set to a bridge more bridge mode, and the same subnet, same subnet mask, and same default gateway, which is the location of your new router, which is new router. So if I type this in up there, uh, instead of this here, then I'm going to reach the new router. You know, it's it's all on the, on the same network. So something to keep in mind if you ever decide to do this. Again, you can do this. On a Wi-Fi, you'd have to connect. I would have to connect to the Wi-Fi on the network of the, on the new router's network, and the same thing can be done. It's just a little bit different steps. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't know. Let me know if you like this little uh, intro, how to set this up.